did it. I welcome you all back to this second segment of our interactive section. If you are just coming now, if you are just coming now, you can still have this number. So send your text messages to this uh, number. We have the number as plus two three four seven zero one eight eight nine eight nine nine. If you are just coming now, so that you will be able to be part of this section, we want to use live video of our platform to answer as many questions as possible in a brief way. It will be mostly interactive if you will be able to send most of the test questions or test messages. If you are able to send it, it will be it will be more it will be interesting so that we will be able to read as many as we can. At present, you may not see the ball, the, the screen, the projection because of the camera we are using, but we are going, I'm going to read all the questions out so that those who are hearing us will be able to communicate. So we're going to begin with the first question coming from Maria, Monica Maria Cruz. Monica is asking the first question. He said, a group of devotees from New York asked me if it is possible to pray during Holy Friday, the third Friday reparation. These devotees are praying six hours a day together. Is it correct to do the third Friday on this day? Thank you. Another question that goes forward says, are we going to have an internet conference on Holy Thursday? And the third question says, could your broadcast, could you broadcast some live Holy Weeks ceremonies? For example, the Easter the Triduum and the Easter Resurrection. This is a question coming from Monica. Then the last question from her is, please clarify that the devotee should not receive the Holy Communion using a cruise that some devotees are using as a purifier. Then they take the clothes to the warrants back. There is much confusion among the devotees. These are the questions coming from Monica Cruz. Right now, we shall begin the answer of the questions. The first question goes by whether one can say this is ours. It is quite important on Good Friday those who can follow the live program on the television to join. Having done the three major program on that Friday, which is the Station of the Cross, the Kissing of the Cross, and the Celebration of the Eucharist. Any devotee that have that time in full can still add the Reparation program. Since you are doing it at home and since it is an individual program, you have your own right to divide your program as you like. Maybe in the morning section, you do part of the program of the of the three doom, that Good Friday, or that of the Holy Thursday. So you join the program 
either in the light revision, if you are not permitted to go out, but if you are permitted to have the program in your parish, the parish program covers the 35 day reparation because that day was that day is the very heart of the, the church uh, celebration, the, the our Christian faith, the three doom, Thursday, Friday, then Saturday, Sunday will be the climax of our faith. So, if it is not possible that you are staying at home, you can make up your program as you like. Then the other question goes whether we are going to have the live broadcast on Holy Thursday. Yes, we are going to have one hour program. The live broadcast we are going to have every weekend. Owing to the fact of the importance of the seal and the third Friday, the importance of the seal at this hour, the importance of contemplation, which uh, their bishop emphasized so much. We have seen the need to take the devotees back to the teaching of the seal, through the journey of contemplation. Today we are going to, before we end, we are going to show you what it will look like. Because you cannot have uh, enjoy the spiritual communion or any journey within without finding the journey of contemplation sweet. You must love the contemplation. You must find a way to go within, to find peace within, to enter within, journey into the silence of our hearts. That calmness, that rest is important as long as we are going to enjoy the, this rest. So we are going to have begin that journey to be in one hour program every Saturday, the same hour, the same hour, until we find a reasonable journey, we make a, a, a reasonable journey. And it will also have an interactive section, briefly, 15 minutes after each, each program, for questions. And those who would like to join will be ready to enter into, uh, engage in some program we're going to give you. All, all of them will be projected. We, you will see the projection. We are not seeing this because it is only a WhatsApp program. So, but when we come for the, the teaching of the seal, we are going to make a proper projector, which you can see very clearly, and you will follow the lesson. Then the last one is concerning the reception of the Holy Communion, whether it is good to receive Holy Communion in using clothes and different attire. Owing to this pandemic, many issues has come up on this matter. So, on this regard, devotees have to find the answer within their own conscience. Based on your own spiritual devotion and growth, you have many options. You have the option, the number one option, to have to engage in spiritual communion in order to live out your spiritual life. You have another option, if you feel it is okay for you, maybe how you have understood the call of our Lord to receive using the cross. It is up to you, but anyone you do, you have to do it with reverence and with calmness. It should not be a matter of confusion. Either you receive spiritually or you did not receive. Any of them, any one of them has a soul. What is important is to have Christ in you, in the sanctuary of your heart. If you feel that it is going to be part of an abuse, you, you can forget about it and do your spiritual communion, which is encouraged at this time. You can even know that there are many Christians who have no access to the Holy Mass because of this coronavirus. Now, the other question says, the person asks a question that is uh, Medina. Medina Romero is asking a question. The first one said, I am Joseph from Colombia with my wife. We have been doing the Facebook Live uh, sermons to so prayer with others, our daily Christian blood prayer. Then, do you agree with such? One can do such if in this section, now there is restriction, there can be an online prayers at home. People can connect together and do their, their ceremony together. 
But when this thing is over, there is a need for you to retire in your various Gethsemane home, your parishes, your churches. Right now, the call is we have to do it at home. While going online, you should also invite your family, as we just said. The second question from a priest from Colombia is said, he says that there is more and more confusion against Pope Francis. That a lot of people resist the Ubi et Obi blessing and influence others not to receive it. What should we say to all who all those against Pope Francis? In my conference, I made one categorical statement that those who accuse their bishop, their leader, will be judged heavily. Jesus, in his teaching, in the scripture, said, Love your enemy and pray for them. Assuming Pope Francis is your enemy, and Jesus said, Love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. But on the contrary, he is not your enemy. He has not done anything wrong against you. Why should you hate him? Why should you accuse? Why should you point evil finger against him? And I said again that we need to pray for him because it is not easy to lead the church. To be a leader of your family, you find it difficult. But some people think that it is easy to be a leader, and that is why they can easily point an accusing finger on whoever that is a leader. If you are asked to go and lead, you will as well find it difficult to do so. I want to point out that the blessing the Pope has given is what the church has been doing from ages. During the time of war, when nobody will be uh, will be able to go out attend masses or when nobody will be able to attend any ceremony or gather together because of war the church they have the power which god gave them to grant such indulgence it is the it is the teaching of the church and we the church has power to forgive that sin because christ has given the church that power to do it so those who don't want to receive it can forget about it. But those who really want to receive it will enjoy it. All of us has put our head together and benefit from there. But whether you believe or not, the blessing is there. Many people will be saved because of that. But for those who don't receive it, it is even sin against the Holy Spirit to prevent others from receiving it by speaking against such dogma of the church, what church has established. Remember Christ said, whatever we bind on earth, he has been bind on, on earth, and whatever you live on earth, whatever you lose here on earth has been loose. And that power remains with the church. And the power that a priest used to consecrate the, uh, the Eucharist is not residing uh, is not because the priest has the power. It's the power he received from the church. The holiness of the priest does not change anything. So, in the same way, the church has the power to give all the blessings to his people. So, those who are humble enough will receive this blessing and they have nothing to worry about. Then, I have to point out one other thing is Devotees of the Christian God should not be among those who go to the extreme to fight against the Pope. Pray for him. His office is not easy to carry. Even if you think that he is not doing it well, that is one of the best reasons why you should pray for him and love him. There are many people who are suffering in purgatory because they accuse they are priests. They point evil finger against their priests. What will they suffer? Those who appoint evil finger on the hierarchy, the, the fullness of the priesthood, the number one priest, our Holy Father. So you gain nothing by, by hating him, by appointing. If there's anything you don't like, the church has a full room. 
make your suggestion, point out whatever you do. The church has a way to respond to all those things. But it will be very, very, very wrong to stand and point a busy finger on the Holy Father or may or blaspheme against him or even conspire with others to do so. I pity many people who go onto the media and send all sorts of things against him. Let we who are real devotees of the precious of blood, the victim souls, the lovers of the agonizing Jesus Christ, find it joy to be an intercessor of the church, to pray for him whom God has anointed, and to love him because your prayer becomes more effective when you love him. May God bless this word in your hearts. Then, another person asks the question, if it's okay to do a ordinary July prayer at this time, so that is an initiative from a group of Venezuela that we follow and also doing prayers and broadcasting our life. We are going to start third part of the prayer. That is a wonderful inspiration. Any group that can gather together and pray, nobody can resist them. It is wonderful if you can do the three set of uh, November and the month of July. That is your own contribution to, towards what is going on. Jesus needs sacrifice. Jesus needs one or two people who will be able to pray and make sacrifice to have mercy on the world. I remember what Jesus, the interaction of God and Abraham. Abraham asked God, if you were able to see 50 people, if I am able to see 50 people who are good, who obey you, who live in your way, will you still destroy Sodom? God said, as long as I live, for the sake of that 50, I will not. So the same is applicable to us, we lovers and we dear ones. If God will find us worthy, it will be wonderful. I remember the appeal of Our Lady early last year. He said, if one third, one third of all the devotees of the Christian blood who consecrated to him, to the most Christian blood, will be able to struggle and attend that nine consecutive months of third Friday synagogue prayer, he will heal our land. Who knows whether it is this coming event that our Lord was, our lady was talking about. He said, I will heal your land. And we send those ap appeal to all the devotees. My question I say want to ask to all who are listening to me. Did we have up to one third of our de consecrated members in that last year cenacle of prayer. If not, we can begin that we will make amend. We have to do some amend. And that amend we are going to do is to begin from now to start that third Friday reparation. That nine consecutive months is important to all the devotees. So now, if group gather together and begin that three set of no July November, it is a wonderful initiative and I encourage it. Then the other questions coming from another person, no name, he said, I am a devotee from Lagos, Nigeria. Just to confirm this number that was provided to this. Okay, my name no, is that one is 20 not together. I got another question. Can you give me the prayer of the seal hour after meditation? Thanks. Also, that's what is the name of the contact person who is using this phone? That one is not your question. So, the only question that is important here is that the seal prayer, the prayer of the seal, will come out proper. Our Lord said, He will give you, He will allow us to have it when we must have learned much about the seal. And that is one of the reasons why we want to begin the program of the seal and the contemplative journey because the seal begins with contemplation. So we are going to begin the call of the seal, the journey of the seal, every third Friday, every Saturday, beginning from next week till maybe around June. Every Saturday, we go on for one hour to talk about the seal and contemplation. It will be very, very interesting if you be part of it. Another question goes. 
say in my parish they are giving the Eucharist in the hand or in the mouth we choose but it is being given by a minister can I take it? that one is also a personal I want to do something here let me put something very very important it is good that our devotees also should leave the document of the church, especially the document of the Second Vatican Council. There are a lot of people who think that the Second Vatican Council is not beneficial to the church, and they hate everything. They don't even want to read it. I, will, I want to encourage you, take time and read the Second Vatican Council document. You will discover that the, the message of the preacher of God is in compliance to this. Communion in the hand, communion by extraordinary ministers, is what Canon 2 text says from 3 of the Code of Canon Law 1983 says that in the case of necessity, in the case of necessity, an extraordinary person will be appointed, then delegated by the church to do to help and distribute holy communion. Now, our Lord is agonizing mostly because necessity, that word is necessity. People are making use of what is necessity as ordinary. Even when there is three people, when there is four people, when there is five people, people will still rush and give a certain, a certain people will give holy communion. The priests will sit back without seeing the importance of doing their work. Necessity, let me give one example of necessity. In 2005 in Nigeria, we are doing reparation at Federal Capital Territory in, in a very called Papa Ground in Abuja 2005. And Blessed Carmel was exposed. All the priests were down at confessional. After a while, a heavy breeze started blowing and started scattering the whole church. A layman, one layman, rushed to the altar because the wind has already blown everything down and carried the blessed sacrament to the sacristy. Because there was no peace around. Such acts is a necessity. In fact, our Lord will bless him for taking that step, that bold step. It is necessity that causes it. So when necessity warrants, a ordinary minister can help. And that is what the church document is proposing. And in the teaching of the seal, which our Lord gave to us in the desert, our Lord emphasized, I am making this appeal because my children have already forget what should be done. So, it is the duty of the priest. It is the priest consecrated to do this. They are the one who carries this out. But when necessity comes, then the extraordinary minister comes in. We should understand this. It should not be a norm that when there is no necessity, so the thing goes. But our own parts, in order to correct this, what I want to say, if you love me, stand for me against this. You do it in violence. If you want to receive, if you receive from extraordinary minister you have not seen and you receive Jesus Christ. If you feel you don't want to receive, instead of going out to cause any confusion or create any confusion, you sit down and say your prayers. Or you can quickly go to where the priest is and receive. But it is wrong to go into to go to a extraordinary minister and when you receive it, you think that you have committed sin or you think that it is not Jesus Christ that you receive. In Nigeria, any time when our Lord gave this message, a set of people went into a stream to even interpret that message in a very wrong way and say that what our Lord means is this. If someone receives Jesus Christ from the unconsecrated hand, Jesus will disappear from the host. That is aberration. That is error. In fact, it is the problem of the, the extremists. They go and even put 
word into our Lord's mouth. In short, if you if you go by that, they become heretical. Doesn't mean. In short, our Lord has to come in one of the messages and say, no amount of discretion, no amount of this will ever will be have, will have power to force me out in this sacrament, in the Eucharistic species. I am there, body, soul, and divinity. That is one important thing. So if you, as a devotee, happen to that ethnic group, you are one of those destroying the devotion. It is not true. You should understand that virtue lies in the middle. Even if you want to ad ad advise an elder, you have to do it with wisdom, not doing it in the way that it will be bring another problem. Or even do it in such a way that the message is seen to be error. No, it's not an error. I will not know what it's saying, but that is exactly what the church itself is saying. It is not prayer cannot contradict in the church. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I am emphasizing because I know many persons will come up on the issue of the Holy Communion and the, in the, whether I receive it in the hand or not receive it in the hand because it is a problem of the time. But you should know what I want. want. So, the important thing here, which is, should be very, very clear, is that Jesus wants us to see the importance, the value of this sacrament. And want us, want the church to revere it. Want the church to adore it. And want the priests in particular to take up their function. That is the essence of this. But as we do this, we have to be a gentle victory. It should not be in a, in a coercive way. It's such a way that some people think that just like uh, what also happened somewhere at that early time. Some people who, I don't know where they is instruction. The someone the receiving communion from someone who is maybe a lay person, uh, is a lay sister or a lay person, they think that Jesus has the, they went outside and started out. Ab abomination. May God forgive. Such is not part of the devotion. So I encourage the way of God is not the way of man. Virtue lies in the middle. Okay. Another one asks a question. He said, or then with you only go from England. I encourage I encourage about four of my friends to pray the Gethsemane hour. I did last Thursday Gethsemane. Okay. I did last Thursday Gethsemane hour. With a, with a friend through WhatsApp, we all don't live in the same city. Some live one or some live one hour, some live one hour, uh, one hour away. So we can only do the same hour individually in our homes. Is there anything wrong with that? As long as this time is consigned, there's nothing wrong in it. But if there is an opportunity to do the ceremony hour more other time, together best. But one, it is not possible as this time comes, you can do the Gethsemane hour in media and connect others. More question. Then another person asks other question. He said, 